What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to be going over Bali and include some technical things as well as some tactical things. I'm going to be also going between singles and doubles. So if there's something specific that you guys are looking for, I'm going to have a timestamp so you can go to that specific part in the video. The things we're going to be covering here are going to be mainly on the technical side on how to approach volleying from different scenarios. And then from there, you can expand upon it because everything I do is going to be more the mental side of it. That way you guys know how to use those skills. So let's get right into it. On the technical aspect of volleying, it's very simple. Volleying is actually one of the most compact and low maintenance shots we have in the game. You actually could volley without even doing anything. It's all about racket pressure. You want to make sure that wherever the ball is, you meet it with minimal motion. That's what volleying is. People who say go, ahead, go out and punch the volley, they need to be punched in the face. The point is, volleying is more like catching. When the ball comes to you, you reach your hand out and you squeeze the racket and you put that pressure on the racket. Now obviously there is some motion involved in what you're trying to do, but that's mainly deflective motion in most cases. So if I was to have the ball coming at me, I'm just gonna use my racket as a catcher's mitt, like a baseball player. So the ball comes flying through this zone right here. And as you can see, it's right in this zone. If I put my hand out to catch the ball, it's that motion right there. If I put my hand out and squeeze the racket tightly, it's the identical motion. I'm meeting the ball, and I'm putting that little bit of pressure as I go to grab it. So if I go to grab it, or if I go to volley, the motions are the same. It's not a lot of this going on. And most people try to hit volleys and try to be super offensive, and those things come into play. But the basic part of volleying is really meeting the ball like you're playing catch with somebody and just guiding it in and having that racket pressure. Now I know I only showed the forehand volley, but the backhand volley is pretty much the same thing. I'm giving the backhand volley a little bit more attention in this little piece because backhand volleying is the thing that people avoid. It's actually the things you should do the most. Here's why. When you go to volley, your ready position should actually favor your backhand side. So from the beginning, you have the ability to cover everything that comes to your body, all of your backhand side, and in some emergency cases, even parts of your low forehand side. The forehand coverage area is actually only this limited space here, but you'll see a lot of players trying really hard to go make everything forehand because most people feel like the forehand is a more aggressive shot, which in most cases it is. But the backhand volley is actually the shot that solves the most problems. So again, just as a little demonstration, I've got the ball coming to my backhand side and I'm kind of just waiting for it here. Same as the catch on the forehand side. I find the ball and I meet it. If I put my body in the path of the ball, I'm safe. I can handle anything that comes at me and I'm not waiting and trying to force a forehand and then you end up getting these jammed positions. You go after backhand and then when you see a shot that you can do more with, then you adjust and try to make forehands. Most people do the opposite. They wait for forehands and end up doing things like this. Okay, so when you're at the net as a doubles player, you're only ever volleying for two reasons. Reason number one is to end the point, and reason number two is to stay in the point. Those reasons are divided by what your current situation is. What I mean is, if there's a ball that my partners are rallying, so baseline to baseline, and I'm the volleyer, they're already doing something that has nothing to do with me. If I get myself involved, what I'm essentially saying is the shot that I can hit is better than the shot you're already hitting. And if that's not the case, then you should not go after the volley. Likewise, if a ball comes at me where they're rallying and then the baseliner changes direction and hits the ball right at me, I wasn't involved in the point in the beginning and then that I was just pulled into the point. So the quality of my shot shouldn't be held to an amazing standard when it wasn't a ball that I set up or created. So when they hit a ball dead at you or right at your feet, your job is to stay in the point because you did not have a proper setup to be offensive, as opposed to when you poach the ball and go and take it from the middle, you're saying that the quality of your shot is going to supersede the quality of the shot of the partner that's in the back. So here's the example of taking a ball from the middle. That ball's coming in this zone, I could let my partner just have that ball 
and let him have it going back and forth. But by getting involved, I'm saying the quality of my shots is gonna be better, which it would be. But the thing that people get in trouble with is they take their rackets back, as I said earlier, and they come in trying to do these huge swings. And in most cases, you don't have the time to do that because this is half of your normal ball travel time. So you wanna make these moves and still keep them very concise and simple. You can win at the net without hitting basically forehands at the net, or backhands at the net. The volleying is still a very concise motion and all you need to do is be at the right place at the right time. And conversely, as I said, if you're at the, if you're at the net and the ball's getting fired right at you, your quality of shot goes down. So your job is essentially to make sure that you don't lose the point. Keep that ball that just got fired at you in play, try to keep it at the baseline and continue the point. Yes, obviously there's some opportunities to do shots like that. However, in most cases, this is the best you can hope for. So don't put that as your goal. You don't need to be able to do that when somebody just hit a ball directly at you and your job is to stay in the point. So most people will see a ball like this and then they'll go after it and they'll say, oh, I should have done more with that shot. Realistically, you shouldn't have. The ball came at you, you weren't in the point in the beginning, they were rallying cross court and then one came right to you. Obviously, you wanna be on your toes and on guard, but if a ball gets shot right to your body, you do the best you can, you continue the point. And in most cases, most people get themselves in trouble because they'll see a ball like that and they'll try to be aggressive just because they see the opening in between the two players. You can try to put it there, but in most cases, you're going to end up making a mistake or not hitting the quality of shot that you want. Okay, so on to the singles volleying. Now, singles volleying has a little bit more context that's required, meaning what's the quality of your approach shot? Where did you hit your approach shot? How do you cover the ball? I did a specific segment of videos not too long ago called the seven ways to get to the net. That covers the positioning and the different types of shots that you can use. I'll link that video to this one. But in terms of the technical aspect of it, as well as how to actually hit the volleys, that's what I'm gonna cover here. So first things first, when you hit your approach shot, as I covered in the video before, wherever your approach shot goes, you wanna go to the net standing closer to that side. So if I hit my ball to the opponent's deuce side, that means I should be on my ad side, as those two things are right in front of each other. And not drastically, if I use this line as a guide, when I get to the net, I should be off center about this much. That way I can reach the line in one big step and I cover the angle when they try and go cross court. You want to cover both baseline corner shots with your court position and force them to have to try to hit the more difficult sharp angle under pressure, which is not that easy. Once you have yourself in the proper court position, then we get into the different ways to actually hit these volleys. That's what I'm gonna cover right now. So as a volleyer coming in, you've got basically two ways to volley. You can again volley to play neutral or you can be close enough to volley to finish the point. That's going to be dependent on how close you get and the height at which the ball is when you get there. The one thing that's still non-negotiable, which I covered in the very beginning, is you wanna make sure as you move, that racket stays in front. You wanna use your look to basically push the ball over. Way too many times I see people running to the net and they take their volleys like that. That's basically a slice. The problem is, with how fast most people are moving, you're now doubling or tripling the racket speed because your legs are moving the racket and your arms are moving the racket. Most people feel like, well, I need to do this to get the ball to move. But if you think about it, the racket starts on, at this part of the frame, and as I move, you can see the racket getting closer to this part of the frame. So your legs move the ball just as much as your arm moves the ball. And if you're doing both at the same time, the racket's getting from this side to this side faster. So the trick here is, if you are on your way to the net, you wanna make sure that you compensate for what's happening with the ball with your legs. The legs are gonna change to the height of the ball. As you can see, you can't even see the ball coming in right now, but I'm stepping towards them and I'm making it. Now, if I was to change the height of the ball, for example, and have it coming up here, my legs are going to bring me up to the height of the ball so that my motion can stay the same. Once that happens, again, where did I take the ball from? I took it from low. I'll just shift the camera here. Because I'm taking the ball from low, my goal is to stay in the point. I will be transitioning in, 
and I have to make sure that my job is to keep myself in the point. Whereas once you get closer, now we've got more aggressive options. But that first ball coming in low, you don't want to come in and be carving the hand. You want to let the legs do the work, push that ball to the back. Arms are out, legs do the work, not that. A lot of people come in and they try and do those type of things. Jump shot, nailed it. That is the most important part when it comes to volleying as a singles player. Your legs do more than you think they do. And by coming in with the hands, matching the legs instead of the hands, over compensating for the legs, you end up with way less mistakes. Combine what I just did there with what we did in the doubles, and you will only have to really pay attention to where you're hitting the ball. If you approach one side, the obvious answer is hit your secondary volley to the other side. You don't have to, but that's the basic play. At least you keep the pressure on the person and make the move. When you come into the net, you try to be fancy, you have to have the skills to back it up. Like trying to hit an approach shot to the same side as your finishing volley, your volley quality has to go up because you need to keep the pressure on them. When people come to the net as intermediate players, their biggest goal is usually make the volley. And like I said with the serving video not too long ago, the biggest mistake you can make is give up control. You never wanna just hit the ball over the net and say my goal was over the net because it takes away two things from you. One, it takes away your ability to capitalize because you don't know what's gonna happen. And two, it takes away your ability to correct because you don't know what you were trying to do. If I hit a volley into the net, but I had no plan on anything other than getting it in the court, don't know what I did wrong. But if I hit a volley into the net and I say, I was trying to hit that ball deep, I know that I probably turned my racket too much for how deep I was trying to hit it. That makes perfect sense when you think about how you're moving forward. The mistakes we make aren't at the net. In most cases, the mistakes are made on our way. We look like superstars once we get up there, but getting to the net's the problem. People fumble it in this transition area, and it's usually because they try to be too aggressive or they don't know what they're trying to do in the first place. That's gonna wrap up this video, guys. I told you it wasn't gonna be super in-depth. It was more about how to think, less about how to actually hit. We got some technical stuff in there, but volleying is very simple. There's not a lot to do. Hold a continental grip, keep the racket in front of you, and volley with your legs. If you volley with your hands, you're gonna end up overdoing it. You're gonna end up overhitting the ball because your court is significantly shorter than when you actually are using your hands, which is at the baseline. Send this video to anybody that you think needs to help with transitioning to the net or volleying in general. And I did make an announcement that we are going to be redoing the podcast when the channel hits a thousand subscribers. So send this video to somebody that you think may enjoy the channel. And once we hit that 1000, I am going to start talking to people about the topics we're going to get into. I've already sent out emails and I've already sent out stuff on Instagram to take ideas, but I want to get you guys involved in the podcast this time around. Rather than just listening to me and other people talk, we wanna answer the questions you guys have or even have you guys in as guests via Zoom or Instagram Live or anything, but we wanna get the community involved on a lot of this stuff. But that wraps it up. We'll see you guys in the next one.